Molde FK are currently 12th in the league and they have also been knocked out of the Europa Conference League. It's safe to say they aren't having a good season. But today that's all going to change as I've travelled to Norway with the sole intention of making them the best team in the world. Now I'm looking at the team and it's honestly all over the place. They're playing with a five at the back. They've got players playing out of positions. It's just a mess. To their credit though, Molde's team isn't actually that old. I'd say their average age is mid-20s at best. And unfortunately we don't have Fofana at our disposal. They sold him to Chelsea for 12 million but best believe I'm going to whip my Horse off to bring him back. Well, the first thing we're doing is switching formation because I do not rock with a five at the back. Now, with the team having two CDMs, I think the 4 2 3 1 narrow formation is literally perfect for Molder. Honestly, it's amazing what a simple formation change can do to a team. Look at the difference already. And it looks like we've got a homegrown Norwegian wonderkid on our hands. Robin Pedersen, he's 16 years old and he can already go into that starting 11. Now it's a matter of where to spend our money on this squad, and let's be honest, where do we begin? Our front four is the strongest part of the team, which in its own right is a worrying thing to say. Both of our CDMs are pretty average at best, but they're both pretty young, so I'm going to give them a season to see what they can do. And that just leaves our goalkeeper and our centre-back duo to improve, and I think I'm going to improve the goalkeeper first. But we haven't got much money to work with at all, only 5 million given to us in our first season. But the first thing we did was sell all the other homegrown talent in the youth academy that we simply weren't going to use, but to be honest, we may as well not have sold them. We've only got 1 million more than we originally had. Boys, we are really up against it in this one. I'll explain why afterwards, but I've gone for a better centre-back rather than a goalkeeper. And I have found Norwegian centre-back Jakob Glesner has definitely got that name wrong, but he's definitely better than any defender we've got right now. And to make sure this deal went through, he cost us just over 3 million. And with him in the back four, it massively strengthens that defensive lineup. Now, obviously, I said at the start I was going to get a new goalkeeper, and I didn't, so let me explain why. It's pretty simple, really. He's only 25 years old, and he's already improved to 69 rated, so I figured why not just give him a chance for a couple of seasons to see how how much he grows. But right now, this Molde team are currently 12th in the Norwegian League and they've been knocked out of the Europa Conference League, so our aim this season is at least to do better than they're doing in real life right now. Well, boys, we are definitely in a title race. Bodo glimped off first place, Viking FK are second place, and we are third. But to be fair, if we want to be winning the title every season, we have to be beating the likes of Bodo Glimp, Viking, and Rosenborg BK. And our boys' stats so far this season are pretty impressive. Eight goals for our striker and eight goals for our central attacking midfielder. If we do have three million to spend, I'm not not sure if we can bring anybody in, but I'm going to try at least. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to bring in a goalkeeper this season, but I think 21-year-old Mads Christiansen will be the perfect replacement for our current goalkeeper in a couple of seasons' time. And for just over 2.3 million, I really can't complain. And that's our transfer window done and dusty. With the team looking like this, you can clearly see the improvements amongst the squad as well. It's got to the point now where we've only got one player under 70 rated. I'd say that's pretty decent going for our first season. And of course, Molde FK are in the Europa Conference League in group F with the following teams. Now, in real life, these guys got knocked out by finishing third, so I wouldn't be too surprised if we did follow suit. We've arrived in December. It's the end of the season, and we missed out on the title by one point. If we had one more point, we'd have won the title on bloody goal difference. I have to admit, I'm disappointed we didn't win the League Cup either. We made it to the semis, but we have to be winning these competitions. And just like in real life, Mulder got knocked out of the Europa Conference League by finishing third. Ironically enough, the group actually almost finished exactly how it did in real life. But I think we're doing something right the team as a whole has massively improved from the start of this season. Our striker, winger and central attacking midfielder showed up. 21 goals for our striker, 14 for our winger and 13 for our central attacking midfielder. The only issue is our Cam Ekram is 32 years old so we may have to let him go next season. We obviously made great strides with Mulder FK this time but next season I want to be winning the league title and at least the league cup as well. But stop before we go any further. If you're enjoying this video so far, leave it a big old thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this. Now we start season two with a little bit more money, 8 million. It's not much, but it's a little bit better than what we had last season. This will be controversial, but I am putting Ikram on the transfer list. He's 32 years old now. He's only going to go downhill and overall, and we need as much money as humanly possible. And thanks to his incredible performance last season, we sold him to Galatasaray for 8 million on the dot. Now we have 15 million. That's a healthy amount of money that we can definitely work with. Now I think it goes without saying we need a new cam to replace Ikram, but we're also going to bring in another centre back to strengthen that back four up as well. But for that cam roll, I have found this player who's definitely caught my eye, Hugo Vettlesen. He's 22 years old, got some pretty decent stats to go with it as well. By the way, if I'm accidentally signing rival teams players, please allow me. I don't have a clue about Norwegian 
American football. But whether he's a rival or not, he costs less than five and a half million to sign from Bodo Glimt. We've got the camera all sorted now, we just need a new defender. Now obviously with nine million, we can't afford the biggest and best defenders in the world, but this guy really caught my eye, Andreas Hans Olsen, who currently plays in Germany, he's 75 rated and he's 26 years old as well, so we'll get at least five years out of him. And in total, he only costs six million for the quality he's gonna bring to our defense, that's an absolute bargain. And that's our transfer window sorted, we've got our camera all sorted, we've got our centre back sorted, making our defensive lineup better than ever, which means one thing, we're going for that league title and we are certainly going for that league cup this season. We are 12 games into the season and once again we are in a title race with surprise, surprise, Bodo Glimt who are currently three points above us. We're also in the playoffs to qualify for the Europa Conference League, so I'm assuming that we have to win the league to get to this point to qualify for the Champions League. Let me tell you something, our winger Bryn Hildson is setting the standard right now. 12 games, 12 goals, 2 assists, that's 14 goal contributions in 12 games. And obviously for 3 million we can't really add any value to the squad right now. It's going to be quite interesting to see how this team fares at the end of this season. Are we going to win the league title, the league cup? How are we going to do in the Europa Conference League? Are we even going to qualify for it as well? But unfortunately it's not going to happen this season as we have once again lost the title, this time to Bodo Clip by literally two points. If we'd have got an extra two points, we'd have beaten them on goal difference again. This is unacceptable for Mulder, man. We need to be winning the League Cup at least. We're in a shocking turn of events. We survived the group stage. We're now in the prelim round, so next season we may be in the round of 16 of the Conference League. But I think it's fair to say if it wasn't for our striker and winger, we wouldn't have accomplished anything this season. But hopefully next season we get a little bit more money and we can finally start to get some real quality in this squad. Now, I did want to start season three by bringing in a brand new keeper, but we're going to have to put that on hold because our current right back is 32 years old, meaning he's going to be on the decline very soon. So I'll put him up for a transfer to get as much money as possible for his replacement. But to be fair, our current goalkeeper is 74 rated right now, so I think he'll do for at least one more season at least. And we have officially said goodbye to our right back, Freiburg have paid out a grand total of 4 million for him, which means we now have 15 million to bring in a suitable replacement. It's taken a while, but we finally found the right back that we want as a replacement. Ethan Laird, he currently plays for Manchester United, he's got some pretty good stats and he's got less than 12 months left on his contract as well. And we definitely got a good deal with Ethan Laird. We only paid out 11 million for him. And that is obviously our transfer window done now. We paid a lot of money for Laird. We've got the back four secure. We just need our goalkeeper now to improve quite significantly this season. But by the halfway point, we'll find out where we've done in the conference league and we'll also find out if we are once again in a title race. While we're running away with the league this time, boys, we're currently first place, 10 points clear of second place Bodo Glimt. So I may have messed up here. I think I've skipped past where the competition actually ended and we're now at the beginning of it because we're now in the playoff round to qualify for it again. So our short-term goal was to reach the quarter-final and it's been left unchecked, so I'm assuming we got knocked out in the round of 16. But we only have 4 million in the bank, so I don't think we can do anything in this transfer window. So the team will remain looking like this till the end of the season. Unfortunately, our right-back Ethan Laird has picked up an injury which will put him out for another 8 weeks, which in fairness isn't the worst thing in the world. But hopefully third time's lucky, we can finally win the league title and I'm hoping that we win the league cup as well. Well boys, third time really is a charm. We have absolutely annihilated the league this time. We finished 13 points above second place Bodo Glimt. And we have finally won the league cup. Thank God for that. It only took us three attempts. But whilst we've done well in the league and league cup, we have absolutely flopped in Europe. We finished third in the group stage. We are out of the conference league. To be honest though, I think we all know why we definitely need a new keeper if we're going to do well in European competitions. But this season, our entire front four showed up. Look at the stats, man. They all absolutely carried this team. But if I'm not mistaken, winning the Norwegian League gives us a chance to qualify for the Champions League. And to be honest, I'm really hoping I'm right in saying that because that's our end goal after all. Now, we're starting season four by having to sell our centre back, Jakob Glesn, as he submitted a transfer request. They really don't want me to bring in a new goalkeeper, do they? To be fair, though, we got a really good deal for Glesn, as we got eight million for him. Now, there's one player I've wanted to buy since season one, Christopher Azir. The only thing is, I haven't had enough time to scout him properly, so we're going in this blind. We know his market value is 18 and a half million but he's got less than 12 months on his contract so we might be able to swindle a deal i'm gonna go for 16 million just to see what they say and they're accepting 16 million it's done just like that we've officially just made our first high quality transfer the question is what is overall okay it's the moment of truth what is his overall 80 rated overall we've just got an absolute bargain with azure and we have massively just strengthened the back line with the signing of only one player and honestly it couldn't have come at a better time because i think we may have qualifications for the champions league this season. But regardless, we want the league title and the 
League Cup once again. Anything less than that, I will consider this season a massive failure. Well, unfortunately, it's not going to be that easy this year. We are second in the league halfway through the season, closely behind Bodo Glimpse with first. And I was right, we are in the qualifying rounds for the Champions League group stage. We've got to get past HJK Helsinki first, though. And honestly, with only 5 million in the bank, we really can't bring any value to this team. So all of our hopes of success this season rely on this team right in front of you. And he's more than capable of doing it. We stormed the league last season, so there's no reason why we can't do it this time. And I was absolutely spot on. We have once again won the Norwegian League. It was a little more difficult this time, but nonetheless, we still won it by four points. And we once again won the League Cup as well. That's back-to-back -back League titles and League Cup. But we weren't good enough to reach the round of 16 in the Champions League. We did finish third, however, so we will be in the prelim round in the Europa League, so you never know what could happen next season. But we're now at the point where we don't really need a new keeper. We've got a 79 rated goalkeeper now. We might be 80 or 81 rated this time next season. But our front four coming in clutch once again, but a special shout out to our striker, Berisha. 36 goals, 3 assists in 42 games is outstanding. Every season this team is improving and every season this team is getting closer and closer to becoming the best team in the world and I think it's only a matter of time before we make that happen. But we start season 5 with a lacklustre budget of only 28 million. We aren't going to be able to do much with just that. Now really I'd like to bolster our midfield a little bit more by bringing in a new CDM and also bolster that defensive lineup by bringing in a new left back as well. But with less than 30 million we can't buy for both positions so I'm going to sell our current left back to give us enough funds to make that happen. And we did finally sell him for 7 million on the dot. Now we have 33 million to spend and I think this is just enough to get who we want. Now for our left back I'm thinking of going for Norwegian Leo Hegeld. I've definitely butchered that name but he's 22 years old. Unfortunately though we didn't have enough time to scout him properly so I don't know what his overall is. However his market value is 9.5 million so we may be able to swindle a deal. I'm going to push me luck and go for 8.5 million just to test the waters. They want 9.1 million. Absolutely fine. 400,000 below his market value. That's a bargain. We have secured the deal but the big question is what is his overall? He's 76 overall which is what our previous left back was but the difference is he's 22 years old so he's got loads of time for improvement. And for our CDM we once again didn't have enough time to scout him fully but Paul Lozano has seriously caught my eye. He's well within our budget right now and he's got some pretty decent stats as well. And for 14 and a half million his overall is 80 overall. That is absolutely perfect. He'll slot straight into the starting 11. And that is our transfer window done and with the team looking like this we are slowly becoming contenders in Europe. And speaking of we are currently in the Europa League prelim round so it's going to be quite interesting halfway through the season to see how we fared in that competition. So far so good boys we're halfway through the season and we are top of the league but at this point we really should be expecting this. But one thing I am surprised we've only got to win the bloody Europa League beating Ajax 2-0 in the final. From getting knocked out of the Champions League group stage to winning the goddamn Europa League what a story that is. But never mind that the stats halfway through the season are actually insane especially our striker Viton Berisha 13 goals from 13 games is amazing. But unfortunately we've got some bad news about him. Looking at his development plan his stats are decreasing rapidly meaning either we're going to have to cash in on him or we're just going to have to let him ride into the sunset. Now as you've already seen our budget every season hasn't been amazing so I think our best option is to cash in on him and just get a better striker. And to be honest boys we got a great deal for Berisha. We got 36.5 million for him. And with that sale in the bag we now have 42 million on the dot and I know exactly who I'm going to buy. I said from day one I wanted to bring this striker back to Molder FK. David Datro Fofon. He's 23 years old still. 81 rated and his stats are insane. And for 34.9 million we once again made Fofon a Molder FK player. And I think it goes without saying our transfer window was done with the signing of Fofana. The team looks absolutely amazing now in fairness as well. But we have the league title to focus on, the league cup to focus on and hopefully now we are in the group stage of the Champions League and hopefully this time we don't get knocked out straight away. We have once again arrived at the end of the season and once again we have won the Norwegian League by three points. You'll love to see it. And once again we've won the league cup. I think at this point if we don't win both the league and the league cup there's something seriously wrong. Now this is a bit of a surprise to me. We've gone and topped our group with Real Madrid Braga and Genkin and not only have we topped it we've gone undefeated meaning we beat Real Madrid. Next year may actually be the season we win the Champions League with Mulder FK. Obviously there's a lot of work that still needs to be done with this squad but if we're beating Real Madrid I think we're doing something right. What a signing for Fofana turned out to be 27 goals 2 assists in 28 games. That is a goal a game basically. What a player. Next season we'll continue our Champions League journey in the knockouts meaning in the January transfer window we're going to have to make sure that our team is prepared as possible. So entering season 6 with Mulder FK, it's clear to see our backline's probably the weakest part of their squad. But we only have 48 million to spend, so we've got 
to decide whether I want a fullback or a centre back. Now our centre back's almost 30 years old, whereas our fullback is only 23 years old, meaning he's got a higher chance of growing in overall this season. So I think I'm gonna opt for a better centre back. Not only have I found a centre back, I have found a previous Champions League winning centre back, Joe Gomez, 29 years old, got some insane stats as well, and he is well within our price range. But signing Joe Gomez wasn't gonna be cheap as he cost us 38 million to secure the deal. But I think it's gonna be worth it because last season without Joe Gomez, we beat Real Madrid of all teams in the Champions League group stage. So imagine what we could do with Gomez in the squad. But now I've done all I can. It's now up to the boys to do the job in the knockouts. And here we are in the round of 16 against Bayer Leverkusen, a pretty good team to come up against pretty early on as well. We are away from home in the first leg. It's gonna be quite interesting to see how we get on because, oh my God, okay. Vettelsen and Fofana, 2-1 to us going into the second leg. I understand that we beat Real Madrid to get to this point, but if we get past Bayer Leverkusen and make it to the quarters, I'm going to be amazed, man. We have massively overachieved if we pull that off. Oh my God. We don't just beat them. We've absolutely annihilated them 5-2. And I go, could this actually be the year that we do beat? We're now up against Italian giants AC Milan and their team is actually stacked. And on top of that, our left winger, Bryn Hildson, has picked up a freaking red card. I think it's safe to say the odds are stacked against us, but we are starting this leg away from home. What can we do against Milan? We pick up a one-all draw. Mason freaking Mount coming back to haunt me. Our team is absolutely knackered. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how we fare against Milan. Oh, Milan. Oh, come on, man. A penalty shootout. Really? That's how we get knocked out? That's gutting, man. I genuinely thought this was the season we were going to win it. But unlike the rest of these guys in the competition, we've got about three quarters of our season left to do. So let's go to the halfway point to see how we're getting on. Well, boys, we're 12 games into the season and we may actually lose the title. We are third in the league and we're four points behind Bodo Glimt. And these are probably the worst stats I've seen halfway through the season so far with Molder FK. I don't know whether it's the Champions League, but these boys aren't focused at all. And with only 8 million, I literally can't do anything to improve their squad. So the team is going to remain as it is, but honestly, for the Norwegian League, this team should absolutely run riot. Well, I wouldn't say we ran riot, but we did enough to win the league. We finished joint on points with Rosenborg BK, but we beat them on goal difference. It was bloody close this time. Time. And on top of that, once again, we have won the League Cup. Like I say, if we aren't winning the League Cup and League at this point, there's something seriously wrong. Now, this is quite funny. We once again made it to the group stage and we topped it with flying colours, but Man United finished bottom of Group D. What the hell has happened to that club? Honestly, I reckon we just need a left back and a backup striker, and this team, I think, is ready to go. But forget about that for a second. Check out the stats at the end of the season 27 for Pedersen, 22 for Bryn Hilton, and 19 for Fofana. Absolutely incredible performance and as i've already said there are some improvements i'd like to make and i think once we make them we'll be ready to win the champions league so we're now in season seven and we're just around the corner from around the 16 so we have to make sure that this team is as prepared as possible now i think the way to go forward is bringing in a brand new left back for the starting 11 and bringing in a backup goalkeeper just in case anything happens to christiansen and to be fair we got a lot of money this time 55 mil will definitely do the trick now at this point in career mode this goalkeeper is a veteran nick pope and we brought him from Manchester United for only 3 million. But obviously for the left back, I wasn't going to go for a veteran. I'm going for David Rowan, who's 29 years old. He also plays for United as well. I feel like I'm just raiding them at this point. But United weren't willing to part ways with David Rowan that easily. It cost us 37.2 million to sign him. And with those two signings, the team is almost complete. But there's one thing I want to bring in this season, and that's a backup striker. And after looking for ages, I stumbled upon this free agent, Tiziano Ferry. He's 16 years old. I haven't scouted him properly because I just don't have the time. But look at how promising those stats look. I think he'd be perfect for a backup. And I was absolutely spot on. He's 75 rated. He'll be perfect for a second strike. And I'll be honest with you guys, the starting 11, in my opinion, looks amazing. The Suns bench is the strongest it's ever been. I think we're ready for this season. Last season, we got knocked out of the Champions League by AC Milan in the quarters. What can we do this time? And in the round of 16, we managed to knock out Lazio. And afterwards, we just scraped past PSG, meaning we are in the semi-finals. At this point, after beating the likes of Real Madrid and PSG. Man City, I'm not too fussed about. We are away from home in the first leg. If we can get a win here, we've got a 1-0. Oh my God. Boys, we may actually pull this off. All we need is a draw against City and we're in the final, boys. We've already won the first game, so the damage is already really done. 
Can we do... Oh, my God. We smashed them in the second leg. 4-1 overall the end. And we're in the Champions League final. And, boys, in the final, we face off against Italian giant Juventus. This is pretty weird because normally I'm telling you how we finished the season. But we're halfway through it in Norway. And we're still currently top of the league. Just check out the stats halfway through the season, man. 21 goals for our winger, Bryn Hildson. Fofana with 14. Pedersen with 12. Raum even getting six as well. Well, before we get into the game, let's just admire how good this team has become. Pedersen, our homegrown talent 89 rated man what an absolute baller so fond of the prodigal some return with 86 rated Ben Hildson an absolute stud since season 1 91 rated as well and not to forget the likes of Mansvert, Lozano, Joe Gomez, Christensen as well man they've all been amazing but just like last time there's going to be a little twist I aren't playing the final I'm going to be hands free I'm going to be watching the boys win us the Champions League that's a great ball Vettelson do something please Vettelson See that run? Oh my god, Pedersen! Mickey, oh my god! You are one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper! Top left minute, you absolute moron! Pedersen on the corner, make it a good delivery, that's fucking shit! Gov Olsen on the wing, he's cutting inside, I don't like this, that is really good defending. That's a phenomenal ball, Fofana is in behind, please! Do not mess this up. He's freaking scored as well. I thought his extra touch was just a little bit too much, but he has rifled that top left bins. Fofana, the prodigal son, he has put us 1-0 up. Juve are going to come at us with everything they've got now. We need to make sure that we're defending properly. Brunelson, he's on the wing once again. Can he spot that run from Fofana? I don't think he spotted it. He's going on his own though. He's, he's done really... Why? What, what, what was that? Ref, we are literally three minutes over extra time. What are you doing? Blow the damn whistle. I swear if Juve score from this, I'm going to go nuts. That is a fantastic tackle and that has just saved us potentially a goal. Solid first off, but I think we need one more goal just to be safe. You've got to bear in mind as well, our players are knackered and they're still doing Juve over. And look at this from Bryn Hildson. He's caught inside. That is amazing. What are you doing, Vettelson? I had I hopes he'd be a good player, but he's too out to be dog shit. Juve is starting to turn the heat up now. They're really starting to come out of Shaven Birch. Again, Joe Gomez, he's been a rock in this game at the back. Make the right pass. Pofana is in acres. Please pass it to him. Allison, I saw you are an absolutely greedy waste of... Oh, my God. Juve are really turning the heat up now. That is an incredible save from Christensen. We have got just over 10 minutes to hold on to this lead, and we are officially the best team in the world. Pedersen on the corner. If I was these guys, I'd be going short and sort of time wasting now. <laughs> What is that? Boys, we still got the ball though. Oh my God. Fofana with the brace. Fofana with the brace. He has potentially just put the final nail in the coffin of Juve's chances of winning the Champions League. Boys, we may officially be the best team in the world. Surely that's the game done now. Juve surely cannot get back into this game. But they're trying to. Goretzka's holding everybody off. He's taking a shot. And just like that... Juve have got one back. Mulder, what are you playing at? Mulder, for the love of God, time waste. Just time waste. We've done it, boys. We have done it. We have officially made Mulder FK the best team in the world. It took seven long seasons to take Mulder FK from 12th in the Norwegian League to becoming the champions of Europe. And if you enjoyed this video with Mulder FK, you should click somewhere right here to watch me rebuild Wigan Athletic. You will never guess who I signed in season five.